Never play a sequel until you've played the original. Wise words. Of course, made famous by Sir Richard Arkwright, the 18th century inventor and pioneer of the factory system. It was at the end of the Industrial Revolution when Arkwright answered his critics by saying, Ah, oh, forget about disease and pollution and poverty and never play a sequel until you've played the original. I, I, I should have listened to Richard Arkwright. Good old dick! See, I recently played Metro Last Light, and I was absolutely blown away by its atmosphere and story. A big fan of Metro Last Light. But see, I played it having never played this, the original Metro, Metro 2033. Maybe if I had, I would have liked this game a whole lot more. Given the situation, I just wanted to play Last Light. Metro 2033 was released back in 2010, but even then, the criticisms of Metro were virtually the same as they are today. Awesome atmosphere, awesome presentation, slightly less awesome gameplay. In retrospect, Last Light took some big strides to change that narrative, but here in the original, that's definitely still the narrative. Speaking of narrative, that was Metro's strong point even in 2033. The nuclear apocalypse has finally happened, and the only people left on the entire planet are the ones living beneath it, the ones who got underground before it was too late. And now man faces extinction, fighting to survive deep within the dark tunnels of the old metro. Unfortunately, we're not the only species living there. As with its sequel, Metro is all about its vibe and atmosphere. And this game hits on all the right emotions at all the right times. Down in the shelters, this game is palpably solemn. In the firefights, adrenaline city. And up on the surface, at times, haunting. And freaking awesome. <laughs> The catch is, again, it's all less effective than its sequel, and in no area is that more evident than in its gameplay. Metro is a stealth-based first-person shooter, but where stealth is actually a strength of Last Light, it's a weakness in 2033. Making just one mistake means the jig is up for the entire section, and what's worse, every single freaking enemy will know exactly where you are. Like, telepathically, I guess? As for the shooting mechanics, uh, I mean, they're okay. The guns seem heavier than in the sequel, if that makes sense. Maybe a bit less effective. But another big difference is this game's gas mask. If you're on the surface, you have to wear it. And you have to constantly change the filters. Now, in theory, that's cool. It sort of puts your life on a timer. But in practice, that just becomes incredibly annoying. Plus, it gets cracked. You can't see anything. Like, freaking monsters. If there's one thing playing Last Light first has uh, illuminated for me, it's that 2033 definitely feels like the rough draft, you know? It has a lot of the ideas and things I love about Last Light, they're just not as developed as well. And the game in general just isn't as sharp. The characters aren't as interesting, the game's not as polished, and even the game's strength, its atmosphere, isn't quite as atmospheric. But you know, this is still a really interesting game, and I might have called it a really good game, but it just it didn't do it for me the way its sequel did. It's kind of like Metro's slightly less hot older sister. You know, 2033 is like the Julia Stiles to Last Light's Larissa Olenek. Only Heath Ledger's dead, so... I mean, who's gonna sing to 2033? Thank <laughs> you.